French high school students are ranked among the smartest in the world, but things seem to go downhill a bit when they get to higher education. French students essentially have two options. They can go to a public university or they can compete for an elite grande école. So what's it like to be a college student here in France? And why do so many of them fail? And why don't French schools score higher in global rankings? Join us for this episode of French Connections Plus when we take a look at the college experience à la française. The degrees that French students get are similar to other places. There are bachelor's degrees, what they call a licence, master's degrees, doctorate, but the school culture in France is very different. 2.5 million students are involved in higher education in France, and that number is constantly on the rise. Now, most of them attend public universities like the world-famous Sorbonne. But in the name of égalité, there is no competition at all to get into French universities. By law, any student who passes their baccalaureate is in. The idea is to promote social mobility and diversity through a merit-based system. And while it might be easy to get into French university, once you're there, it's a bit of a nightmare. The classes are jam-packed, and that's where the competition really kicks in. Undergraduate life in France has been likened to organizing a shipwreck and seeing who can swim. And the first year failure rate is staggering. Nearly half of French students fail in their first year. And when it comes to school rankings, French universities almost never make it into the best schools in the world. And same goes for student satisfaction. Often foreign exchange students say that the academic experience in France is radically different. Of the 2.6 million students in France, over 12% come from abroad. In Paris, many come here to the Cité Internationale Universitaire, a private foundation that's been welcoming and housing students for nearly a century. It's the perfect place to find out what it's like to study in France. My name is Diego Paz. My name is Hyo Jong. Michelle Alroul. Kathleen Bertje. Chu Hom. My name is Charlie, and I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, just a few days before coming to France, I really thought that, oh my god, I'm coming to France. French students give this impression that they don't study. They tend to dictate what professors always say. So write, like they are writing, writing, writing. Students are more serious when they're um, presenting themselves. They seem like they're partying all the time, but it's not true, they're also studying. It's both hard and easy. If you are like me and uh, leave everything for the last minute, then it can get a little bit stressful. You do your work, then you play. Les personnes sont toujours très accueillantes. When I talk to my other French students from not from Paris, they even found it hard to mix with Parisian students. Paris, c'est c'est une ville très vivante. There's a lot of cultural activities. You go on the metro, you you see uh, concerts everywhere. Plus qu'une expérience d'études, c'est une expérience vraiment de vie. Outside of the non-selective university network, there is another network of super selective schools. Britain has Oxford and Cambridge, the United States has the Ivy League, and France has its own beast, les grandes écoles, the big schools or the great schools. It's here that France's business, political and engineering elite is educated. So just what is a grande école? Well, there's no official list, but uh, it's common knowledge that there are about 200 of these elite institutions, and they're often highly specialized in one field, like engineering. Uh, and they're typically quite small. They'll have a student body of about 100 to 300 students a year. Now, to be admitted into a grande école, you have to take a very competitive exam called a concours. And given how selective they are, many students actually go to a special preparatory school just to get in. This is the infamous prépa that takes about two years, and it is a special kind of hell. Essentially, you're studying all the time, and when you're not studying, you're taking exams. <laughs> and a lot of these exams take place on Saturday morning. They're called l'école. 
As for the Grand École themselves, some are public, some are private, and some are certainly better than others. Well, perhaps the most prestigious Grand École in France is an engineering school known as Polytechnique, also known as Lix. But you also have the business schools HEC, LESSEC, the art school Les Beaux-Arts. But the Grand École that people talk the most about is actually the national administration school known as LINA. INA, the state officer training college, is a good case study for the Grande École. Nicknamed the School of Power, it accepts only 5% of applicants and turns out about 100 graduates a year, ranked according to their brilliance. Like many other Grande Écoles, LENA is free. In fact, students are paid to study as they're considered interns of the civil service. Graduates of the National Administration School are called INARC, and they're pretty much guaranteed a golden and powerful career. Famous INARC include countless ministers and prime ministers, as well as former presidents Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, Jacques Chirac, François Hollande, and the current president, Emmanuel Macron. Opinions are divided over the merits of the school. While some say INA is an opportunity for social and professional promotion, others say it's elitist, archaic. These critics say INA keeps power among a few hundred graduates and is ultimately responsible for holding the country back. France's Grandes Écoles get a lot of money from the state. In fact, they get about 30% of the country's higher education budget, but only educate 5% of students. These institutions are well organized and well equipped, and they certainly give students a leg up with prestigious internships and job experiences. The lucky few who manage to get into these schools are pretty much guaranteed a job for life. But despite the prestige, critics say the system puts a stranglehold on politics and big business. Well, there was a recent survey that found that about 80% of top executives from France's largest 40 companies hail from just a handful of these institutions. And it's the same thing if you look at top civil servants and government officials. The Grand École have also come under fire for their lack of diversity. Spots in the schools tend to go to the children of the elite, ensuring that power stays in the hands of mostly white, upper-middle-class people from one generation to the next. And there's an expression for this in France. It's called the reproduction sociale, social reproduction. But things are changing a little bit, and in recent years, there have been attempts to open up these institutions here in France and abroad as well. Bonjour. Hello. I'd like to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I'm here at uh, HEC Paris with uh, François Collin. You're the director of international development here. How would you describe the school's mission and its student body? Well, the mission of the school is twofold. Uh, one, as a business school, is to educate future business leaders and current business leaders. Our second mission is very much as an academic and research institution. What we can say about the student body is that it's extremely bright and capable students selected uh, uh, globally among the very best students applying to management degrees. HEC Paris is, is one of the top grandes écoles in France. Uh, grandes écoles have sometimes come under fire for not being diverse enough. What programs do you have in place to welcome students from diverse backgrounds, perhaps affirmative action programs like that? Something that it's very important for us is that we want again to select the very best students regardless of the revenues of the families and their and the wealth and the families. So anybody selected for the school, uh, if he or she doesn't have the mean to pay the tuition fees, he or she would be eligible for a scholarship. Today, 18% of the students have scholarships. We are also very involved with that, especially in France, in, in supporting all the actions uh, in the suburbs and with the less privileged circles. We work uh, early on while they are in high school with the students to uh, support them, to train them, but also to, to coach them in a way about their, their plans to show them it is possible. There is no such obstacle as the phase or the selection process and they, they, can, they can make it. And coming back to foreign students, uh, how do you attract foreign students? Uh, because when you're not French, it's not necessarily the first thing you think about coming to study in France. A lot of foreign students don't know that they can actually study here at HEC without even speaking French. In most of the programs, you can study entirely in English. The faculty itself is, is two-thirds international. The common language 
is English. But at the same time, we value a lot the, uh, the importance of learning French, especially if they want to have internships in France, if they want to start a career here, they would need to learn the language. And also for the sake of uh, cultural experience. And you know, France itself is part of the attraction. Its diversity, its um, economic potential. Many people acknowledge now that, that France is a startup nation. We are rooted in this country and enabling the students here to have a French experience. And at the same time, we speak two languages. We speak French, we speak English, we have 100 nationalities. We provide an experience here which is, we believe, truly international while being local. Well, thank you so much, uh, François Collin, for walking us through the, uh, the challenges faced by uh, Grande École in the modern world. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Many of you had questions for us about higher education in France, starting with Patrick White. Now, he asks, how career determinative is the French education system compared to other developed nations? Well, the degree you get still matters a lot. It can either open a whole lot of doors for you or it can slam them in your face. And all this puts a lot of pressure on high school students to work hard and to carefully choose their degree and where they choose to go to school because a changing career paths as an adult or going back to school as an adult isn't really part of French culture, though things are changing. Now, there was also a lot of questions about cost. Kevin McGinnis wanted to know, are university tuition fees low? I heard the Sorbonne, one of the best schools in France, is super cheap. Well, the cost of higher education in France is one of the lowest in the world, especially compared to the United States, and that goes for foreign students as well. In public universities like La Sorbonne, tuition is about 200 to 500 euros a year, depending on the degree you do. And in private schools, tuition is higher. For instance, some business schools are charged about 15,000 euros a year, but it's still a lot lower than other countries. And essentially, students don't rake up as much debt. Which is a good thing. Flo, thank you for that. That's all the time we have for today's show. And please keep sending us your questions. You can tweet me at Flo Vilmino or send us a message on our Facebook page. And we will see you again next time for another French Connections Plus.